everyone. My name is Colleen and I'm an educator at the St. Louis Art Museum. Welcome to We Wednesday. Today we're going to be talking about the materials that artists use. What kind of materials do you like to use to make art? We'll start by reading a story together, then we'll be looking at some art from the museum's collection, and we'll end by making our own art together. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you'd like to get a closer look, if you'd like to talk about something with the people that you're with, or if you need to gather some art supplies. Are you ready? Let's get started. Today, we're going to be reading a story called Be a Maker. If you've joined me for We Wednesday before, you may know that when I read a new book, I like to take a look at the cover to see if I can find out some things about the story before I read. Let's take a look at this cover together. What do you notice? I see a few different clues on this cover. I see two children, and it looks like they might be making something together. And I notice lots of materials down here at the bottom that you could use to make something. And I see this piece of paper here, which looks like it might be a plan for something. I also notice that a lot of the letters look like they're made out of something. So this letter looks like it's made out of wood. This letter looks like it's made out of blocks. What do you think the story might be about based on what we can see? Let's find out. Be a Maker by Katie Howes, illustrated by Elizabeth Bukovic. Ask yourself this question in the morning when you wake. In a world of possibilities today, what will you make? What's your favorite thing to make? What do you like about making it? Make a tower, make it tall. Make it balance, wobble, fall. Make a mess or make instead a universe inside your head. Make a rhythm, drum and pound. Ears make out another sound. Let's make a rhythm together. If it feels comfortable, you can use your hands and clap them together to make a rhythm, or you can stomp your feet, or you can use your hands against another part of your body, like your chest or your stomach or your lap. Are you ready? I'm going to make a rhythm, and then you can repeat after me. Let's try it. Should we try it together? Let's go. Ready? Nice. You can try out lots of different rhythms using lots of different methods. Let's keep going. Make a telescope for toys. See what's making all that noise. Make a blueprint. Make some more. Cover desk and wall and floor. A blueprint is a plan for something. You can see lots of blueprints that this child has made. A lot of times architects and engineers will use a blueprint to help them plan when they're making a building. Make your way to play outside. Make a spaceship. Take a ride. Where would you like to take your imaginary spaceship? Make a map to journey's end. 
on the way, you make a friend. Make a snack and make a spare. Make enough for both to share. Make a plan and make a sign. Have your neighbors make a line. Make a gift of what you made. Make a smile from lemonade. Make a pledge to help some more. Make a floor, a wall, a door. Sometimes when I'm reading a story, I like to predict what's going to happen on the next page. What do you think is going to happen based on what we've already read? Let's find out. Make a difference, shine a light. Make your town a team tonight. Have you ever worked together with a group of people to make something? How did it feel when you were finished? Ask yourself this question as the sun begins to fade. In a day of making choices, are you proud of what you made? The end. I invite you to think about your favorite part of the story and talk about that with the people that you're with. We're going to travel to the museum now to look at some works of art. Let's imagine how we might get there. Since we're talking about materials today and making things, let's imagine making something that could get us to the museum. Are you going to make a plan and make a boat out of wood and sail to the museum? Or are you going to work together with a group of people to create an aircraft out of paper and fly there? Or are you going to make a totally new form of transportation out of recycled materials? You decide. Once you've decided, if you'd like, you can close your eyes and imagine yourself going. Whew! That was a really exciting journey today. I'm really glad that we made it. In order to get ready to look at our works of art, we're going to be doing an experience I'm calling our Mindfulness Minute. Mindfulness is taking the time to slow down and really pay attention to what you're doing. Since we're talking about materials today, we're going to play a mindful guessing game, thinking about materials that we might use in our art making project later on. To start, we're going to get into a comfortable position. If it feels comfortable, you can close your eyes. And we'll begin by taking a deep breath in through our nose and out through our mouths. Let's try that again, but this time let's take it a little more slowly. Ready? In through your nose and out through your mouth. To play the game, I'm going to describe a material that we might use for our art making project. While you're sitting comfortably, maybe with your eyes closed, breathing normally, I want you to see if you can guess what material it is I'm describing and maybe picture it in your mind. Let's try one. I'm thinking of an object that's smooth and sturdy. When I see this object, it's often a brown color. It can be used to make a lot of different things. It comes in all different shapes and sizes, but I usually see it used to make a box. What am I thinking of? Cardboard. Let's try another one. I'm thinking of something small and sticky. It has a cap and it's rounded. 
when I open the cap and I touch it, it's wet and sticky. I can use this object to attach other things to each other. What am I thinking of? Glue! Let's try the last one. I'm thinking of something long and skinny. Its edges are rounded, but when I touch one end, it's sharp and pointy. This object comes in lots of different colors, and I can use it to write or draw. What am I thinking of? A pencil. Now that we've imagined some materials together, we've thought about how they look, what they might feel like, how we might use them, I want you to imagine using all those materials together to create something. Imagine what you might make. Now, let's end our experience by taking another deep breath in through our nose and out through our mouths. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you for playing a mindful guessing game with me today. I feel much more ready to look at some really amazing works of art. We're going to look at some works of art from the museum's collection together. If you'd like, you can scroll down on the page to get a closer look at the images we'll be viewing. Feel free to pause the video at any time to do this. Take a careful look at this work of art. What do you see? Let's zoom in to get a closer look. What new details can you see now? This is a sculpture by an artist named Louise Nevelson. It's called New Continent. She created this sculpture by layering elements from buildings that had been thrown away into small wooden boxes. There are many shapes in the materials Louise Nevelson used. Let's find some together. Find a circle. There's one. Find a rectangle. I see one here. Find an oval. There's one. Louise Nevelson combined many boxes together to create this sculpture. How could you find out how many boxes there are? What strategies could you use? There are 36 boxes total. Which one is your favorite and why? Let's see how another artist created a work of art using unique materials. We're going to look at this work of art from up close first. What do you see? Let's zoom out to get a different perspective. What new details can you see now? Let's zoom out one last time to get the full view of this work of art. What more did you discover? This is a sculpture by an artist named Leonardo Drew. It's called Untitled Number 45. What similarities do you notice between this work of art and the work of art we just looked at together? Similar to Louise Nevelson, Leonardo Drew used many pieces to create this large work of art. It's 37 feet long, which is almost as long as a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Over 300 wooden panels are covered with fabric, string, feathers, and other items that were once thrown away. He then burned, rusted, and stained the panels. Leonardo Drew needed many materials to create this massive work of art, including things that had been thrown away. Artists are often transforming materials into completely different things when they make their art. Imagine transforming a collection of unusual materials like boxes and recycled materials into your own work of art. 
what would it look like? If you'd like, you can talk about your ideas with the people that you're with. Now that we looked at some art together, let's travel back home so we can make our own art. So get in your wooden boat and sail home, or hop in that paper plane and fly, or get in your recycled moving creation, and let's head home. For our art making project today, we are going to be making our own collage boxes. We've been talking about materials and the many ways that artists make their creations. We're going to get inspired by the artwork that we've seen today to create our own collages using a variety of materials. You may recognize some of the materials from the game that we played earlier today. So for our project today, we're going to need a few different things. First, we're going to need a box. It can be any kind of box that you have around your home, a cardboard box, a snack box, anything will work, any size will work. We're going to need some other recycled materials to create our collage. So I have some items from an egg carton, some packing material, tissue paper, plastic, some cardboard, um, straw, cardboard tube, some plastic caps, but you can use anything that you have around your home. Your recycling bin is a great place to look, even trash before it's been thrown away. Make sure that you wipe it out or clean it before you use it. Uh, we're also going to need some other materials. We're going to need a scissors, some glue or tape, some drawing materials. I'm going to use crayons and a pencil today, but you could use any drawing materials that you have at home. Markers or paint or pens, anything will work. So to start, I'm going to think about how I might want to arrange my objects in my box. So I was really inspired by the artwork that we looked today and how they really layer different materials together in kind of a small confined space. So I have a few different things. So I was really interested in this piece of the egg carton that I cut out and I thought that might fit really nicely inside my box. And I might try to see what other materials I can use. So this is my packing material that I found and it's kind of nice and fluffy. So you can kind of think about how you might use different materials that have different textures, different shapes, different colors. There's so many great materials to use in your home that are otherwise just going to be thrown away. So your recycling bin, I think, is the best place to look for this kind of project. So I might layer these here. I think those look very different compared to my egg carton that kind of has sharp lines and is a little bit harder. This is a much softer material. And this project's definitely all about experimenting. So it's playing around with things, arranging them, trying to see how they might look together. You might do something one way and then decide that you want to change it and do it the other way. So I found this straw that wasn't used. So I thought this could be kind of an interesting material to use. Oh, and it fits perfectly inside my box. It's kind of fun. I also have some cardboard, our trusty cardboard. That's such a great materials to use. You can use it for so many different things. It can be difficult to cut, so if you want to cut cardboard, make sure you have a grown-up's help to do that. So I've got this nice big piece here, and you can even try to fold cardboard to make it do different things. So that's kind of interesting, so I might kind of experiment with that here to see about kind of wedging it in my box. So that it's bent like that. That looks kind of cool. And I love using cardboard tubes. You can cut them, you can bend them, you can make them into different shapes. So that can kind of create, create other shapes in your collage box that might be more challenging to make with other materials, but I love that they stand up on their own. So now you have some different circles that I've created with my different shapes. Maybe I'll kind of layer them like so here. I want to make sure I add my box here. Or my straw. Oh, and straws even bend. I also found some plastic. 
So plastic is all around us and can be used in a lot of different ways. This is from a plastic bag. So it can be crumpled and folded and layered on top of things. Plastic comes in lots of different colors. So this one's clear so I can even see things underneath when I'm creating it. So I might use these materials now and try to attach them with tape and glue. So I've attached a, a few of my materials now and we've talked a lot today about how artists plan or when you're making something you want to plan it out so if you remember when I started I kind of arranged my materials first and thought about it and then I went back and attached them and sometimes your plan might change so I decided to add these in between my cardboard and I rolled up my plastic here and I taped my straw. So that's something to think about is you can glue and attach as you go or you can make a plan and then do it all at the end. But remember, sometimes your plan might change just depending on what inspired you or the way that you wanted to arrange things. So I think I'm almost done. I might add a few more elements and maybe add some color next to my box collage. So I'm going to use my crayons now to add some, some color. So I have my materials arranged, I have, I added some color with my crayons, and I changed things a little bit as I went along, but that's the fun part about being an artist is that you get to decide how things are arranged. Some of the colors you can see pretty well when you're looking at it and others are kind of hidden, but I think that's kind of a, an exciting part of my project is that some of the, the colors you can only see if you're really looking really closely, which we learned a lot of the artists that we looked at today. You have to look really closely to see uh, to see the really special elements of their work. So that's going to be our box collages. Thank you for joining me today here at We Wednesday. We hope you had fun. I wanted to show you another example of a collage box that I made. So this is the one that we made together. This is my collage box that I made using lots of different recycled materials like an egg carton and bottle caps packing materials, cardboard. I added some color with crayons. I made another box using a much smaller recycled box for my next collage box. I used some of the same materials like cardboard and packing materials, but I found some other interesting shapes in my recycling bin and some other interesting materials that added some new texture that I wanted to use. So you can even make many collage boxes and fit them together to create one large work of art, kind of like how we saw the artists do today. We would love to see your collage boxes. You can share them with us on social media and use the hashtag STL Art Museum and We Wednesday. We hope to see you next time. Keep on creating. Bye.